from a town where most of the people are so close-minded. They go into school and they work in a job, but they don't even like it. I won't be put in a box. Nobody telling me what I should rock. Nobody telling me what I should drop. Cause I do what I want and just nobody don't stop. Uh, the following interview took place at McMaster University. Uh, it was on the radio show Progressive Voices for the CFMU, uh, McMaster Campus uh, Radio. The interviewers have taken a large role in Occupy McMaster. This interview that we had actually took place around the time that Occupy McMaster was getting started and Occupy Hamilton had already been around before them. Myself and three others came in to do an interview and it's about 20 minutes long. We are the media crew or the public relations aspect of Occupy Hamilton at the time. Uh, the interview took place October 27th, 2011 and this is my first radio interview and I'd like to uh, leave you with uh, the actual interview. Here it is. Thanks for tuning in to 93.3 CFMU Radio. This is Progressive Voices. I'm Ria Sanyamolji. And I'm Ryan Sparrow. All right, so today we have in studio the media committee of Occupy Hamilton. Could you please introduce yourselves to our listeners? Uh, my name is Aaron Fitzpatrick. My name is Nicole Smith. Sarah Martell. Uh, my name is Andrew Knowles. Great to have you on the show. So, Occupy Hamilton, uh, maybe to start off, could you each in turn explain your background in community activism, why you decided to get involved with Occupy Hamilton? Well, uh, I've been kind of involved with activism for the last year or so, and it started with mostly um, the G20 protests that happened last year, and after I saw those, it kind of felt kind of a call into action after that. I, I couldn't sit around any longer. So that's kind of where it's taken me over the last year or so through like the local Panel 5 strike and some involvement with Hamilton Free School and things like that. So I found myself kind of become really politically active in the last year or so, and here I am now, and it's kind of a continuation of that, just not wanting to sit by and watch as things happen and kind of get involved. I'm kind of new to Hamilton and new to activism both. I've only been in Hamilton about a year. Um, but I was so inspired when I saw what was going on with Occupy Wall Street. I've been following it since day one, and I was just so pumped when I saw that it come to Hamilton. I, I knew I had to jump right in. Um, how I got started was, um, well, I've been to like some protests, anti-war, um, against police brutality. You know, uh, I was going to school to become a nurse, and I started doing a lot of uh, research into the healthcare system and it just it wasn't working for me and I decided that I needed to find a new path. And when the Occupy movement started, um, it just moved me and I, I saw that there was a chance for change. So along with my friend Amanda Stewart, we uh, created the Facebook page and it just sort of exploded from there. Uh, well, I've been, uh, uh, I'm new to activism, but uh, I, I have been politically aware for some time and uh, uh, I would, you know, research the issues about uh, wars and our in, issues in our society. Um, the most recent activism that I've gone into is uh, there's a community on the uh, Browland in Hamilton, and uh, they're fighting a uh, development project uh, going in there. And I've been involved in that. Uh, I've been to commu uh, community meetings there. Uh, we've done a petition. And uh, I've gotten to talk to hundreds of people up there, and that's uh, one experience that I've really um, that I've really enjoyed. And uh, I really enjoy uh, doing this sort of thing and, and talking to people and uh, getting that message out there. And I think the Occupy Hamilton is a great movement that's starting. Um, well, it started in New York, but it's uh, the Hamilton branch is. Uh, it's a great opportunity for Hamiltonians to come out and express their issues, and uh, I'm here to make sure that it's successful. So you went to some detail about, the, I guess, the origins of Occupy Hamilton. Uh, how, how does it fit into the, the broader Occupy movement? Yeah, I think uh, in terms of how it fits into the broader movement is that we haven't really seen a huge mass movement like this in North America for a long time. So. 
maybe since the 60s. And when we start seeing things going on with the Arab Spring earlier this year, and like there's this new generation of folks in Hamilton, or I guess in particular in this case, who have access to a lot of information and through the internet and things like that. So we can kind of follow what's happening around the world. And when it starts to hit closer to home, you know, you kind of feel really inspired because we all kind of feel these injustices in Hamilton. We see a lot of the poverty and you start to feel helpless about the war and stuff. So, you know, you get inspired when it's so close to home when it comes to New York and you see all these young people kind of standing up for what they believe in. So I think Hamilton kind of, yeah, it, it would feel wrong if we didn't kind of participate in that. Um, the great thing about the Occupy movement is it really takes on the flavor of wherever it goes. So it's very flexible because it's a leaderless movement. You know, it, it was so easy for us as Hamiltonians to embrace it and to start to look at the issues that we face right here in Hamilton. We want to be in solidarity with like the issues of the Occupy movement for Canada as a country and locally. I mean, there are issues that are nationwide. There are issues that are community-wide that I think we need to focus our efforts on getting some progress. There's, you know, getting some change happening because we see that there is something wrong. We want to try and help fix it. Right. And, you know, the main, the main point is, is that uh, Occupy Hamilton is, Basically, you know, it's giving an opportunity for Hamiltonians to, to come out and express their concerns. And, uh, you know, we're, you know, we are a branch of the Occupy movement, you know, but uh, the Occupy movement in general is to discuss the issues in our society. And, uh, you know, Hamiltonians have a chance to be a part of that. Great. And that, another thing to talk about here is every Occupy movement that's sprung up has been so different um, in its structures. So I know in Toronto, for example, uh, there have been people camping out in St. James Park. What's it been like in Hamilton? Well, for now, um, we've sort of let it just grow organically. We started with the Facebook page. Um, then we had general assembly meetings. And we have started doing rallies every Saturday in Gore Park. And there's more and more people coming out every week. We're hoping to get the numbers up there. And if and when we decide to occupy, you'll know it. We noticed that the diversity of people that are coming out, their diverse views, what would you say unites people uh, to the Occupy movement? Well, uh, I think that one thing that uh, we can all agree on is uh, the inequalities in our society, uh, both economically and uh, socially. Uh, one theme that's been mentioned uh, quite often in the Occupy movement is uh, the issue of corporate greed and uh, how corporations are... Uh, basically own most of the wealth. So uh, I think that's one issue that uh, a lot of people are going to agree on. Um, but there's there's so many issues uh, that are related to uh, economic inequality and social inequality. So, uh, you know, those are the main categories. Uh, what the Occupy movement really wants to stand for, I believe, in a sense, is that it's an open platform for all issues. Everyone who has something to say can come and have it discussed. And during those discussions, it, they're amazing sometimes. I mean, everyone gets a voice, everyone listens, and you walk away from the meetings with new knowledge and also knowing that anything that you've expressed has been taken into consideration as well. Yes, I think one of the things that's very special about Occupy is consensus, um, that we actually don't um, go by the majority vote uh, as a sort of rule. I mean, a majority, a sort of two-thirds majority is a sort of last resort for us. Uh, we really try as much as possible to operate by consensus, and this is a, a very empowering thing for all the people who are involved. All right, so what are some of the goals of Occupy Hamilton? For me personally, I think the, the main goal is just to get people talking and to pro provide people with the space here and now. Like, we're having meetings constantly during the week, and we ha they extend on, in, on the into the weekend in a huge public forum out in Gore Park. So I think the immediate goal is just to start having these conversations and get people out and get people interested. Yeah, I agree. I think that uh, the main goals of the Occupy movement is to engage people and to uh, put those issues on the table and get people talking. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what we really want to do in this movement is uh, – make people aware, you know, there's so much apathy and so much cynicism in our society, and uh, I think it really uh, holds a lot of people back, you know, and uh, 
we want to let people know that, you know, what they say is important and they should, uh, you know, they should join us or listen to us and, and see what we have to say and, and, and even, you know, come down to the protests and, and express your concerns about uh, what's going on. I think uh, really in this whole dialogue process that we're having, uh, it's really an opportunity to invite those who are in power to listen to the voice of the people. I mean, they've been so used to just business as usual, month after month, year after year, and basically ignoring the people on the street. This is really a wake-up call to the people who run things and the major corporations and everything to say, hey, we're here. We have a voice. We have ideas about what, what we want to see happen. And I think that's why it's so shocking to the, the powers that be. That's why they're trying so hard to shut down occupies and so on, is because they don't like being challenged. They don't like the fact that people are, are saying, this is our opinion, we want you to listen to them. Or even more dangerous than that is like, if you're not going to teach us how to be democratic and how to have our voices heard, we're going to get together on our own and figure it out and share ideas with each other and we're going to figure out how to make it more democratic and how to have our voices heard. So would you say that the goal of, of Occupy Hamilton then is one of spreading awareness or is there a, a broader picture of, of creating actual social change? Well, I think that uh, the main goal is to uh, create change. You know, I mean, that's why we're out there, right? We want the change to happen, and, and in order to do that, we need to engage people, and uh, we need to get people talking about the issues. And, uh, you know, the, that's why, you know, we're here. We're, we're doing the, we have the General Assemblies, and uh, we, we're talking about how to move this forward, and it's a very democratic process, and uh, we want people to see uh, how we're doing things. And, you know, we're not just... Uh, you know, a, a bunch of people that, you know, we don't know what we're doing. I mean, uh, there's a lot of serious people and a lot of, you know, a lot of people there that are concerned and, you know, there's a lot of responsible people that are trying to uh, further this movement. And uh, I think that's, uh, you know, I think, I think that's the main, the main pieces of our uh, movement here. What, 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 of course, I'm sure you understand very well is that change on the scale that it needs to happen is huge. It's tremendous. And there's an enormous amount of inertia in the system which resists big change on that scale. That's why something like the Worldwide Occupy movement is very exciting and it's very galvanizing to be part of, but it's not a short-term process. You know, this is the beginning, this is awareness, this is building, this is dialogue, this is engagement. But, you know, if you're really going to change the way the world is being run, it's not going to happen overnight. All right. So maybe uh, you could describe how the past two sessions of Occupy Hamilton have been. And in particular, have any community partners, groups, or unions, other organizations endorsed Occupy Hamilton? Have they been approached, that sort of thing? Um, there's been... Um... There's been an open call to a lot of different organizations in Hamilton. Uh, we do have contacts with people in labor unions, and we're going to be reaching out to like people and organizations of all types. Um, we have contacts in the anti-war demonstrations. We have people um, who actually helped us out with the rallies there uh, last Saturday. They're called Cop Watch. And uh, they come around and they film the uh, police officers and make sure everything stays, you know, non-police brutality. Mm -hmm. And that's been, that's worked very well. We're still in the process of um, getting our outreach committee together. And, um, like, we already have formed it, but we're in the process of making lists and seeing who we're going to, to get in touch with. We don't want to exclude anyone. Um, but we do have to be very careful at the same time that no labels get attached to the movement. We're not any left wing, right wing, or any type of political party. Or you know, we want to encompass uh, people from all forms of political spectrum. I think that's extremely important. And one of the concerns that was voiced at the last rally that we had in Gore Park was very strongly from several people that. You know, when you're a small, new organization, being co-opted is a very real threat. And so it, we have to um, maintain this very delicate balance between reaching out 
to all the people who might want to connect with us and who have some similar goals, but at the same time not get totally co-opted and wiped out by them. So it's going to take time and we don't want to rush into partnerships that are going to uh, prove to be too one-sided. So what has the, been the reaction of the broader community and in particular uh, Hamilton Police Force uh, to Occupy Hamilton? Well, I want to start off by saying that the police um, interaction by and large in Canada is very different from the U.S. And I would say especially in Toronto where, I mean, everyone is very mindful of what happened during the G20 uh, meetings and how things didn't go very ideally in terms of the police presence. I think the police have been very careful um, not to come across as, you know, <laughs> brutalizers. Uh, here in Hamilton, um, we've had very little um, discussions with the police, only very sort of informal discussions with them. Uh, we don't have uh, right now an official police contact person. Uh, so in the absence of that, there were just some very informal chats that we had. They were very friendly, very relaxed. The police did not have any problem with the protest or uh, the Occupy movement at this point. They, they, they seemed to be very comfortable. So I, um, I think that's very encouraging that, um, that we've started off with that sort of openness. Uh, well, from my perspective, uh, I, I agree. I haven't seen um, much of a negative response by the police. Uh, I, I know that they are concerned uh, with uh, maybe where the movement's heading, uh, but other than that, uh, I haven't seen any real uh, threatening behavior from the police. Um, in terms of uh, community outreach and uh, you know how the community feels about the protest, uh, I think that the Occupy Hamilton protest is something that's uh, going to be growing and uh, when we're there every Saturday and we're, you know, we have our signs out, we're advertising that our messages uh, for people to see and uh, hopefully, you know, we get a lot more Hamiltonians out to, uh, to our protests every Saturday. They see us there, uh, you know, they read our messages, uh, they can go to our Facebook uh, and our website. So, you know, I, I think that this is something that'll, that'll grow in time. I mean, this is something that we're, uh, that we're just starting. So, uh, you know, we're not, uh, you know, we're in the beginning stages, and I think we hopefully will gain a snowball effect and, and uh, pick up uh, a lot more people in the process. And another thing is we're not giving up. I think every Occupy movement, whether it's Oakland and the police are tearing down their tents, they still came back. Um, people are refusing to not be silenced. The people have just had enough, and they want to make their voices heard. They want to show solidarity with everyone around the world, and they're standing up and rising up, and no one's going to make us go on our knees again, I don't think. <laughs> One of the new committees that we've just set up is the Communications Committee, and this is a, a very important one because we're really um, going to keep those links between the different Occupy groups very strong. And as we see, as, as, as she was saying, it's so inspiring to see how even people who are flattened by, you know, brutal forces can just rise back up and we can continue to mutually encourage each other to press on towards our goals. So is there any future plans for Occupy Hamilton? What do you guys hope to see? Yeah, I think the immediate goal is just to keep, uh, keep allowing the space for things to grow organically and kind of like... You know, if the numbers are small, we're not going to, like, you know, they can be as small as they want, but they're just going to grow. So right now, it's, we're kind of seeing a really interesting process where people are kind of, like, coming in in small numbers, and, you know, as they come in, our group's going to go bigger. So I guess, yeah, the immediate goal is just to kind of let things grow and keep having our general assemblies and encouraging people to kind of come out and have their voices. And, yeah, maybe we'll start to get more creative and start maybe expanding outside of the Saturdays. And yeah, we'll just have to see what happens in the meantime. All right, so for all of our listeners that want to get involved in Occupy Hamilton, how can they do so? Well, we have um, a Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash Occupy Hamilton. We also have uh, an email if you want to get on the email list. And it's occupyhamilton at gmail.com. 
And we also have our own website at www.occupyhamilton.wordpress.com. Don't forget the Twitter. Oh, yes, we're on Twitter. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> Occupy Hamilton. <laughs> So, right. so, there are, so there are lots of ways for people to get in touch with us, and uh, we, we definitely welcome everybody to get involved in the process. And they can even come down to the protests and uh, talk to us directly. Uh, I think that's a very good way to get a hold of us, uh, especially if you want to talk to us face-to-face. -face. And, uh, uh, you know, they can find out more information there as well. So it'll be every Saturday at noon in Gore Park. That's right. And uh, we also have regular meetings on Thursdays, which we invite people to through our Facebook page, so they can just see our Facebook page, and they'll be able to see the location of our meeting. All right, so maybe for our listeners, could you give it again, the time and date, uh, location of the protest, and of the General Assembly? So yeah, that'll be every Saturday. Every single Saturday, we're planning on being out in Gore Park at 12 noon, uh, rain or shine, snow, whatever. We'll be there every Saturday, 12 noon at Gore Park. And then every Thursday, probably usually around 7 p.m., we'll be meeting somewhere downtown. I guess we're kind of figuring out a permanent location right now for our Thursday General Assemblies. Right now we're meeting at the Sky Dragon, but as I said, we're going to firm up a permanent location, and that will be published through our Facebook page. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Any final words before we let you go? Well, I just want to thank you for having this opportunity to share our information with you because we're very excited about this and we would really like to see everybody in Hamilton come out and just say hi. <laughs> and thank you uh, for the opportunity to, uh, you know, get our message out there to the McMaster students. And, uh, you know, we just, we want to spread our message to as many people as possible. You know, we want people to come out and join us and uh, express their concerns and, uh, so I encourage uh, your listeners to uh, come out to our protest, see what we're all about, uh, you know, talk to us, and uh, uh, we'll be happy to, uh, to, to help any, anybody out. All right, thanks again. That was Progressive Voices, 92.3 CFMU Radio.